We're talking with someone that President Biden relies on for advice on how to handle some of the world's most dangerous and complicated situations. That is General C.Q. Brown, Jr., the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the nation's highest ranking military officer. General Brown, thank you very much yeah, for being here. You. you were the primary advisor to the president uh, and the Department of Defense on all matters military. This is quite a military morning because the country of Iran, which has already killed three U.S. soldiers in the Middle East and launched attacks through proxies on more than 100 U.S. positions, may now this morning attack Israel, our ally, with what we're hearing up to 150 cruise missiles and drones. How close are we, sir, to war in the Middle East? Well, one of the things I, I'll, I'll tell you, Tony, is that we're really trying to avoid war. And it, this is part of the, uh, the dialogue uh, that I have with my counterparts within the region to include the uh, Israeli uh, chief of defense who I talked to yesterday. Um, and we're doing uh, things not only to uh, prevent a war, but at the same time, uh, one of my primary things is to make sure that all of our forces in the region are, uh, are protected. So how concerned are you, General? Uh, we have uh, an American general on the ground in Israel, we're told, coordinating a potential response. If Iran launches a major attack from its own soil on our ally Israel, where we have an ironclad relationship, according to the president, is America, U.S. soldiers, drawn into a conflict once again in that region? Well, that's the, you know, of course it could be a potential, but that's the thing that we're trying to avoid, which is why we're, we're engaging. You know, I've talked to my Israeli counterpart since, uh, you know, I took over from 1 October, 7 October was when Hamas went into Israel. And so I've talked to my counterpart on a regular basis to help us better see um, where the threat is, how we should respond, uh, all to make sure that we uh, avoid a, a conflict. And that was one of our goals when we first came uh, right after 7 October. I know I we're talking, goals, but are, are we worried? preparing? Yeah. yeah. Are you worried? Are we worried? What's your level of concern here, sir? And are we well, preparing? Are yeah. we preparing for it just in case? Because they said they're going to do it. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, I, you know, in my role as the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs is to provide options for the president and, and for the nation, and, and the same with uh, Secretary Austin. And so uh, we're always planning and preparing. If that's one thing we do very well is plan and prepare. And, uh, you know, I could not be prouder of our, our force and the work that they do day in and day out uh, to ensure that we are prepared for uh, whatever, might, uh, whatever might occur. General, um, speaking of planning and preparing, the head of USAID says famine has um, begun in parts of Gaza, and the plan is to prepare a pier um, in order to bring aid in. But the construction has not started yet. Um, do you have uh, an anticipation of when that is going to start, and what are the difficulties in that process? Well, you know, we intend to start here in the next uh, next uh, couple of weeks to uh, get the pier in. At the same time, we're working very closely uh, with uh, the uh, aid agencies within Gaza and, other, and bringing other capability in. The real key point is what we want to do is, in, as we engage with the uh, Israelis, is uh, when you're particularly when you're operating in a uh, a uh, urban area uh -huh. um, to avoid civilian casualties, but at the same time bringing the humanitarian aid. Um, we're on track to, to bring in the capability. One of the things we're also again uh, focused on is the uh, protection of the pier uh, as it comes in, and we're working that uh, with our asset, but also with the Israelis. Is that the most difficult challenge, um, um, preventing <clears throat> civilian casualties? Well, I mean, any major con any operational conflict, and, you know, uh, I was the air component commander during the defeat ISIS campaign, when, uh, uh, particularly when we did Mosul, and you really focus on how do you minimize uh, you know, collateral damage in civilian casualties. Well, when yeah. you think about how the U.S. and its coalition forces perform, performed against ISIS in Mosul with civilians in the way, and you look at how the IDF and Netanyahu in Israel has performed in Gaza, the U.S. has called, Joe Biden has called it, President Biden has called it a mistake, said it was over the top. Militarily, what's your assessment of how Israel has conducted this war? Well, it's a very complex environment, and uh, and this is an area that I've, you know, again, I've talked to my counterpart on a regular basis, other leaders within um, Israeli uh, defense establishment, uh, of doing everything they can to minimize uh, uh, civilian casualties, realizing they're operating in a, a very dense urban environment in some cases, which makes it a, a bit more difficult. I'd also highlight that Hamas um, surrounds itself with civilians, which yeah. makes it even more difficult. Uh, to be able to, uh, to minimize civilian casualties. Does Israel then create more terrorists by striking civilians in its effort to get to Hamas? Mm. Well, you know, their goal is to really, uh, you know, as you know, to destroy Hamas. But at the same time, they want to have uh, a peace and stability uh, uh, for Israel, but also in the region. And again, this is a conversation that I have on a regular basis, not only with Israel, but uh, many of the other uh, counterparts uh, uh, in the region. Uh, let's talk about Ukraine and Russia for just a second, because that's still ongoing, too. You know, there are just hot spots all over the world, and I know you have to pay attention to every single one. And he's cool as a cucumber this yes. morning. I'm, I'm more worried <laughs> I, than he is, apparently. I can't imagine how you're sleeping at night, because there's so much to keep track of, but you are certainly up for the job. But Ukraine and Russia, 
They're saying unless they get more support from the United States, Ukraine is not going to be able to succeed in this war. Right now, that money is being held up in Congress. How do you see that playing out? Well, you know, you, as you're probably aware, there's a ongoing discussions about the uh, to get to the supplemental. Uh, it, it is hugely important to, not only to provide uh, Ukraine capability, but what most people don't understand is that money doesn't go direct to Ukraine. It actually comes back into our industrial base, to American factories, American jobs. It not only helps Ukraine, but it also helps uh, our military because we, it, you know, we provide some of our existing capability. This will also build up our stocks again as well. But so also how do you explain to the American people? Because they're like, enough, how much money can we give? How much money yeah. can we give here, here, here? When we have so many problems at home, we had the mm. FBI director just saying yesterday yeah. that he's concerned about attack on American soil. That gets everybody's attention. Of course. That. So Along with the money being shelled out. Why do we have yes. to be everybody's big brother? Yes. Well, one of the things is uh, U.S. leadership is uh, much desired. And uh, many of the nations around the world watch what we do, watch what we say. Uh, I've been in this job six months. I've probably had about 150 different engagements with my counterparts from around the world. Yeah. Um, and they pay attention to, you know, what we say, what we do. Um, and, and being a leader um, has some responsibilities. Um, and, and it's not only how we look at our national security here at home, but yeah. how we impact our national interests around the world um, is, is why these engagements are so important and why uh, supporting our allies and partners, uh, particularly when you have an unprovoked attack mm -hmm. into a, uh, a country that wants to protect its citizens and wants to protect its sovereignty. Yeah, Gen uh, General Gale joked about, uh, you know, she doesn't know how you sleep. Yeah. I want to ask you seriously, what keeps you up at night? Well, not much, actually, because I'm, 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 you know, the reason I say that, I, I am so proud of every one of our service members and their families and the work that they do day in and day out so I can sleep well. Now, there's a lot of things I think about. Uh, I think about the, 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 you know, all this complexity we just talked about, um, but I also talk, think about the responsibilities we have. Hmm. And, uh, you know, when I came in on, uh, shortly, after, a couple days after I came in, I put out a memo, a message to the Joint Force, and I laid out three expectations. Owning our warfighting skills has primacy in all we do. We need to modernize and lead aggressively with uh, new concepts and approaches, and trust is the foundation of our profession. Hmm. But six months into the job, do you still like this job? Your wife is here. She seems sane <laughs> as well. Is there a part of you that thinks, I don't know? Uh, Th this I, just seems I, extremely know, I, difficult to me on so many different levels. And I still want to know, for the American people, there, how are we balancing? How are we safe in this country is our big concern. Well, you know, f for me personally, um, I. I've been in pressure situations throughout my career. Um, you know, I flew F, uh, F-16s a good portion of my career. Um, I do not mind the pressure. Hmm. Um, I, I want to be in a place where I can make a difference. Um, and uh, if, if uh, this job in particular gives me yeah. the opportunity to make a difference, yeah. um, I, do, I, I try to stay on top of all the complexity. Um, mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time reading, getting briefs. Yeah. Um, I was up this morning um, mm -hmm. uh, be, be, uh, before coming here to sit down and read uh, much of the intelligence. And so I'm always thinking. And I think that's the other part is just to be uh, able to sit back and synthesize all this and then try to look not just on today, but also look you know, around the look, corner, around the corner, uh, look yeah. a little longer because, you know, I'd rather be proactive than reactive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, well, three generations of uh, military service in your family. I hope people see you here today and they start a new tradition in their family. Yeah. Um, Thank you so I inspire much. the next generation to, to continue to serve. We appreciate you serving us both home and abroad. Uh, General Brown, thank you. Thank you.